Are they a-hole? Kid stepmom wants to see them. My husband left me eight years ago for his mistress, Dina. Dina and my ex-husband ended up having kids immediately, before the ink on the divorce papers could even dry. My kids were six and five at a time and are now 14 and 13, while their kids are now eight, seven and five. But they aren't fond of Dina. They said she talked badly about me to them, that she calls herself their mom, and that she's kind of pushy. Basic stepmom grievances. Can't blame them. They still enjoy time with their dad, so it's not a big deal until they make it one. I have 75% custody, so one week out of the month they see him. Apparently, old habits die hard, and my ex is now leaving Dina for another woman. During drop-offs and pickups, Dina cries and tells me how stupid she feels and that she regrets trusting him. Called me heartless, but I don't care. At all. She took me aside to chat, and I humored her expecting an apology since now she understood what she put me through. She asked if her kids can still have a relationship with mine, and I told her that her kids with my ex-husband have nothing to do with me, and I won't be looking to split custody or facilitate any extra meetings outside of custody overlaps. She asked if I could make sure that when her kids are dropped off, mine are too. I told her bluntly to work it out with him and to leave me alone. She cried and told me that I was a heartless mother, and that I had no idea what not seeing her stepchildren would do to her, and that she wants to still be able to see them. I told her bluntly, no, she's not their mom that if she wants to see my kids, she's out of her beans, and that this is what comes with breaking up a family. I discussed the possibility of not seeing Dina as much with my kids, and they shrugged it off as, finally, and my ex-husband is too busy planning his next wedding to care. My mother thinks I'm being bitter and selfish, and that since Dina finally knows my pain, I can at the very least try to be kind to her. Edit. I feel like there's some confusion. I'm not stopping my kids from seeing their half-siblings. But I'm not going out of my way to make sure she has access to them either. I'm not changing my custody agreement to match up with when her kids are there. That is their father's job, not mine. Now for the top comments. Not today, Hall. Dina, meet Karma. Karma, Dina. You two should be well acquainted. Sorry, one member of this meeting was late. Everyone, meet shocked Pikachu face. I would love to see her face after that. Her expression would be priceless. I would kill a person to see that. Not today, home. Your mom is the a hole. This woman destroyed your family, and obviously, hypocritically, expects her what? Sympathy? You didn't laugh in her face and say karma's a witch, so she asked that. What more does she deserve? Nothing. You no longer have to deal with her. Ever. Congrats on that. Yeah, but Opie's ex is also the a hole. Dina is stunningly self centered. If your kids don't want to see her, then you should not force them to. Why is Dina so invested in her ex's kids anyway? She has her own kids, so not due to infertility. They don't like her, so not due to enjoying spending time with them. She'll no longer be the stepmom, so no living situation that needs to be made as easy and harmonious as possible. Why does she want time with them so badly? Redirection of her desire for their dad? It's a perfect happy blended family fantasy. Validation that she's the superior woman of the three? Or just the only victory she could still maintain over Opie. Either way, it's hilarious she expects the betrayed wife to sympathize. Anyone who would expect any reaction other than I don't care is living in a sad delusion. Next story. Am I the a-hole for telling my niece and nephew that mom her kids are not my problem? My sister died six years ago. She was married to James. It had Luca, now 14 male, Megan, now 12 female, and Dante, now 11 male. After my sister died, James turned on me and my family. I don't think James liked my sister much in the last few years of their marriage. He seemed to really grow to hate her. I had that vibe for a couple of years before she died, but especially after. He was just so callous, and he told me he was free from her at last, that she should have known he didn't want to be with her anymore and really set him free. I think he never left because of the kids, but he has said he is glad she's dead, and now he could find real love. He could find someone better. Just talks trash about my sister and is disgusting. He never said anything to her while she was alive and they were married. He met his wife 13 months after my sister died, and they got married four years ago. She has a seven-year-old son and two kids with James. We are not a big blended family. My parents did I see my nephews and niece with visitation granted by the courts after he tried to cut us off, but that's where it ends. We see them one weekend a month, and for a certain amount of time at Christmas and near their birthdays. Their stepmother has complained before about us not including her kids with my nephews and niece. Her biggest problem is we have a special birthday cake we make in our family, and we make it for each member of our family every year. Every member gets it. 
The kids have helped us bake it too. She knows about this. She has seen photos, and now she wants us to make it for her kids and to include them in the tradition. My parents and siblings have said no, and so I have. One day she called me using Lucas' phone and told me as the mother of my nephews and niece I should share with her kids. I told her she's their stepmother, and her kids are not my problem. I want to add here that the kids are aware now of how much their dad resented their mom. It's made their relationship tricky. It has also made their relationship with their stepmother pretty bad too. They see how badly they want their mom to cease to exist, even in their memories, and they hate her for that, and they don't know how to feel about him. Their stepmother is pissed at me for hurting young kids. I know Luke has mentioned that his stepbrother does seem to know more about what happens when he and his siblings are with our family, and he said he does feel left out, and thinks his dad and stepmom are talking about it around the other kids. He told me he kind of feels bad, but he also doesn't want them intruding on the family. He said his stepmother would only use her kids as a spy. Megan said her step and half siblings don't belong in our family, and her stepmother proves that when she acts the way she does. But I do feel bad that younger kids are being hurt by this, even if it's the other adults doing this. Am I the a-hole? Cheese and rice. I feel so sorry for your nephews and niece. They lost their mom, and their dad goes out of his way to let them know how much she hates her. Him and his wife want to act like she never existed. If she never existed, the kids wouldn't be here. He actually said he's glad she's gone, and his kids are picking up on that. He's a sick individual. It is not your job to welcome your former brother-in-law's new wife's children in your home, especially with how gross and spiteful they act towards your sister's memory. I never would have guessed back then that he hated her so much, and then she died and the crap he spewed about her was just so upsetting, especially right after she died. The kids are picking up on it, and the older they get, the more they realize how deep it runs. That breaks my heart. They truly lost the only parent that cared about them. If James and stepmom cared, they wouldn't act like this. Keep showing up for them like you do. They know they can count on you and your parents. James just might be met with estrangement as his kids reach adulthood, and that will be his own doing. Not today, home. It's telling that you had to go to court just to see your niece and nephew. I have a feeling that when they turn 18, they will come running to you, slash your family the first chance they get. Keep the line open for them, OP. Also, the stepkids are not your problem. If they were willing to include you from the beginning, then it might be a different matter. But I personally believe she's trying to weaponize her kids against you and the other kids. Keep doing what you're doing and everything should turn out fine. That's what I don't get in this. Obi and family had to fight to get to see the kids. And now stepmom is all, how dare you exclude my kids? Like, hello, you didn't even want the kids related to Obi included. Probably just want some kid-free weekends without having to pay a babysitter. They are not your problem. Although I do feel that you should be putting more of the blame of this on James. He is the one who has created this mess by trash-talking your dead sister. That man is just nasty and cruel. Oh, he is absolutely to blame for all of this. If he didn't hate my sister so much, none of these issues would be happening. Next story is titled, Am I the a-hole for telling my stepbrother won't speak to his sons under the conditions he has set? My stepbrother is going through a divorce. He has a 10-year-old and a 7-year-old son with his wife. The boys are not thrilled about the divorce, and are even less thrilled that he already has a significant other. He moved out six months ago and they started dating two months ago, but he wants to introduce them. He has tried talking to the boys about how happy he was when his parents divorced, because it meant he got the real family, and how much of a relief it is when your parents finally say they're breaking up. But the boys said they didn't feel that way. They wanted their family to still be their family, to be together, etc., he asked me, a 23 female, to speak to them and tell them that I was happy too, that I was relieved too, and how much of a burden was lifted when it happened. Only I didn't feel that way. I was devastated when my parents told me. I was eight and thought my world was ending. My parents seemed so happy. I thought everything was perfect. One minute they talked about trying to give me a sibling, and the next minute it was over. Part of me still wishes their marriage had worked. Not that I think they should have stayed miserable but I wish we could all have been as happy as I was with them together. It wasn't to be and I think they did the right thing before it got bad between them. But my stepbrother doesn't want me to say all this. He was actually disgusted when I told him our initial feelings were different. He was especially pissed that I wish it had worked, because he said it got even better just like he did. He told me he needed me to say what he said to the boys. I told him I could not speak to them under the conditions he was setting. He then went and told my mom, and my mom was not at all shocked. But her husband, stepbrother's dad, was. 
I never realized any part of me still had a soft spot for my nuclear family before my parents divorced. He's also saying it's wrong not to talk to his grandsons. They're both pissy over it. But I mean, I can't speak to them under the conditions set. But I know he will monitor me closely during a conversation now that he knows. So, am I the a-hole? I also wanted to add that we're not close. We're not brother and sister. He has even said we're more like casual acquaintances. I've never been his kid's aunt, and they never have been my nephews. We see each other very rarely. I've met the boys like five times. Now for the comments. Not today, home. Your stepbrother cannot make his children think the way he does. He is invalidating their experience by trying to override it. You would be the perfect person to share your experience with your nephews, because they would probably like to hear that your experience is similar to their own, so they don't feel wrong for not thinking the same way as their father. The most baffling thing is that he seems to think he got a real family through his parents' separation, but he doesn't even see Opie as his sister. That makes zero sense. Your experience was your own, different from your brother's, but just as valid. Your brother was pissed and disgusted when he told him your feelings. Oh my, such empathy he has. Opie, do not let your brother diminish your experience. Do not lie to your nephews. If you have to say nothing to the nephews, suggest counseling and then stay out of it. Not today, home. I think the best part of it is they have never been my nephews, and I have never been their aunt. I am essentially someone they see once every few years. He even said it. We're more like casual acquaintances. Not today, home. You're allowed to have your own feelings. But also, why is talking to those boys your job? Are you a therapist? Seeing as how they're pushing you to do this, want you to lie or are now dismissing your feelings, I think you'd be better off telling them, I understand you want me to help, but I'm not qualified to do this. Sorry. Remember, they cannot force you. Next story. Am I the a-hole for calling my ex a bad father after he cornered me to going to dinner as a family? On Sunday, my ex asked me to pick up our son at 5.30 p.m. instead of the usual 8 p.m. When he got there, he asked if my son had eaten dinner yet, and my ex said no. And my son said his dad said we were all going out to eat together. I told my son he must have been mistaken, but my ex interrupted and said we were going. In the end, we did go because my son started crying, but my ex kept insisting we just go and kept telling me I was being childish by refusing, so I looked like the bad guy. The day after, I called him to tell him to never do that again. We tried to act like what he did was harmless, but I told him he was being manipulative and he was making our separation harder on our son. My ex argued that it had been a year and he should be used to it by now. I was already angry, so I said, Wow, I never thought you would be that guy. But you're sure turning into a bad father. He asked me what I meant, and I said he was using our son as a pawn to get what he wanted. My ex denied it and said he was just doing something nice, and he wouldn't be doing that again. Now he's angry at me. Also, just to add context, my ex has been trying to get me to go to dinner with him for ages now, because he wants to talk about the divorce. I refused, and when we did eventually go on this family dinner, he spent the entire time trying to talk in codes about that. Not today, home. He used your son to manipulate you into giving him what he wants. Next time, stand firm. It's better to let your son cry and explain to him afterwards than to fall for your ex's manipulation trap. Not today, home. I understand why this person is your ex. Good for you for trusting your intuition. This person is intensely manipulative, and I'm sure a slew of other things. Considering your child's environment, please, oh please, seek therapy for the two of you. I cannot emphasize this enough. You may have little control over what goes in on your ex's house, but you do have control in your own. This is not long-term healthy for your son. He needs help processing this, especially considering the messaging he is getting at your ex's house. Good luck. Get some therapy, continue to trust your intuition, and do not waver. Now for the last story. Am I the a-hole for not babysitting for my sister because her mother-in-law is being entitled? My sister is pregnant with her third child and she's having a troubled pregnancy. She's very fragile and needs lots of help. Her two oldest kids are seven and two. They need lots of care and my sister is not capable. My mom is disabled, so she can't help. I can help but only a few days of the week due to my work schedule. My sister-in-law's mother-in-law also helps my sister out, but way less than I do. My sister's mother-in-law doesn't work. She's a housewife. Her kids are all grown up. She barely has responsibilities and she's a very rich woman. And she demands the arranges the babysitting schedule. 
I've told her multiple times the schedule she imposes can't work with me because of my working errors. But she says that's not her issue to figure out. It's my sister and it's mainly my responsibility to care for her and her kids, not mother-in-law's. I accepted a schedule for the sake of my sister, but I got so burned out that I was hospitalized last week for three days. I've recovered now and my sister and her mother-in-law ask when I'll be back on my duties. I said that I can't do this anymore, and while I want to care for my sister during these hard times, I also have to care for my own health. My sister is calling me the a-hole for not helping her when she needs it the most and putting myself first. Am I the a-hole? There's someone missing from this post. Your brother-in-law. You're not the a-hole, but your brother-in-law needs to step up to his mother and arrange a schedule of support for his wife that benefits her and is sensitive to others' needs. He's a mama's boy. He doesn't say no to his mom ever. My sister is frustrated with us, but doesn't do anything to set boundaries. And works lots of hours too, so he barely cares for the kids. Found the real a-hole in this unfortunate situation. Not the a-hole. You can't help if you're getting overworked. I say stand your ground and point out that you help far more than the woman who has nothing to do. Your sister's mother-in-law is the a-hole. And your sister is also the a-hole for not being concerned that your work schedule combined with her mother-in-law's babysitting schedule literally landed you in the hospital. Agreed. OP, you have to stand your ground. Tell your sister that as much as you want to help, you have already told them multiple times that this schedule does not work for you. And you have literally just got out of the hospital because you drove yourself into the ground trying to make it work. Your sister and mother-in-law has a choice. Either the schedule changes to one that you approve of, or you simply cannot help anymore. 